Hey everyone, with this video let me show you how you can recreate that soft dreamy look which a lot of other landscape photographers are using with a little bit of Photoshop. Feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video and now let's begin. For this tutorial we will be using this HDR file, this means we do have a lot of dynamic range, adjusting the highlights and the shadows. And if you're just here for that glow effect I suggest to check the chapters of the video to quickly navigate to that exact part. However, I want to do the raw adjustments first. That means I'm going to change the profile going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will lessen the contrast and in fact, lessening the contrast actually helps to build up this soft look. I will continue this by going into the basic panel and first off I do want to bring down the exposure revealing some more details in that blown out sky and for the same effect I'm going to drop the highlights all the way down. Now the clouds are nicely visible in the back. At this point I want to further reduce the contrast by bringing up the shadows. Not only will this reduce the contrast, but of course it will also brighten up those dark parts and we get back some details. Now let's bring down the contrast even further by bringing up the blacks. And you can already kind of see how those settings are making this image look a bit softer. So that's exactly what we want. However, I do want to add a little more contrast by bringing up the whites. Just a notch, I don't want to overexpose anything too much, but that looks good. While we now have adjusted the overall exposure to somewhat look okay, I want to continue working on that soft look with texture, clarity and dehaze. First off, let's raise the texture. This will make the smallest details a little sharper. And while I'm raising the texture, I am going to drop the clarity which will already give us a very, very subtle soft look overall. And for the same effect, I'm going to bring down the dehaze. I'm very, very careful here with the dehaze since bringing it down too much, you can see this will brighten up the image way too much and we will end up with almost blown out highlights in the sky once more. So let's bring it down. But I think something like this looks pretty good. All right. And finally, let's bring up the vibrance since I want this image to be saturated. Okay, now that's the image after the basic raw adjustments. You can see we went from this blown out image to this soft looking landscape shot. Now I do want to apply a little bit of masking. This doesn't have much to do with that soft look I want to show you, but we need to do this, so let's get started. First off, let me create a linear gradient covering the top part of the of the sky because I think it's a bit too bright. And with this one, I just want to bring down the exposure. Okay, I want to create another one right away, making it not as big as before, just touching that top left corner right there. And again, just bring down the exposure. Then I want to add a little bit of glow in the very center just right there using a radial gradient, basically covering the brightest spot of the image. And in here, all I'm doing is to raise the blacks and in turn, I get this very cool looking glow effect. Then let me create another radial gradient for pretty much all of that center area of the image. And what I want to do here is to actually increase the dehaze trying to reduce the atmospheric case of the image and thus getting a clearer look of everything. And I also want to bring up the whites just to make the center part a little brighter. I actually think I need to introduce a one more radial gradient just basically for that lake right there. And again, I'm just going to bring up the brightness by raising the exposure just like that. Now there's one more mask we need to apply and that's for the foreground. Here I'm using a simple linear gradient one more time since I want to make the foreground just slightly darker, adding some kind of fake vignetting effect. So let's bring down the exposure and I want to bring up the highlights just to get some kind of nice contrast going on in here. And I also want to introduce clarity to give the foreground some more structure. Perfect. Maybe let's also raise the texture, but that's it. So that's the image after the masking adjustments. You can see we went from this 
to this. Looks much better. Now let's do a little bit of color grading before heading into Photoshop. For this image, I just want to go into the color mixer. Let's head into the saturation tab. And I want to bring down the yellow saturation quite a bit since I think it's the green tones are a bit too vibrant. But at the same time, I'm going to simply raise the green saturation. So we get a much more, much more natural looking green color tone in here. Also, I want to raise the aqua tones and the blue tones. Perfect, that's it. At this point, we might as well add a little bit of vignetting. So let's head into the effects tab and bring down the vignetting slider. And the last thing I will be doing in the camera raw editor is the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm using the same settings here. Add a bit of masking, increase the amount of sharpening, and that's it. So with that image, we can now open it up in Photoshop and apply the glow effect. So what I'm missing here is some of those highlights in the green color tones are just a little bit too dark. I also want to change that. So let me create a new layer and switch the blending mode to overlay since I want to dodge those yellow color tones. And in order to select those yellow color tones, I am going to use the TK panel plugin here. Simply go to color, select yellow, and we get a pretty good mask as you can see. All I need to do now is to activate the layer mask mode and use color yellow again to apply it on our overlay layer. Then I'm grabbing the brush by pressing B. I'm reducing the brush opacity to not make this effect too strong. And I'm setting the foreground color to white. And now let's just make those yellow highlights a little brighter. Okay, that looks much, much better. Now let's get to the good stuff, the glow effect. For that, I am going to merge everything into a new single layer by hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. And with this layer, what we want to do is to add some blur over the whole image. So let's go to filter, blur and choose Gaussian blur. Depending on how strong you want this effect, you can either choose a low radius or a bigger radius. Usually I tend to go with something bigger. So let's just say, let's go with around 18 pixels. That should be fine and hit OK. Now it's really, really important right after applying this effect, you have to head into the edit menu and then click on fade Gaussian blur. If you do anything between those steps, you won't be able to click on that fade effect. So that's why important to go there right away. Also make sure the preview is available so you can see what's actually happening. And what we want to do is to change the blending mode going from normal to lighten. You could also try screen or color dodge or if you want to have something with a lot of contrast, you could go with overlay. However, in this case, I want to go with lighten. And right away, you can see this is way, way, way too strong. So what we want to do is just bring down the opacity. And again, depending on what you want, you can either go a little bit higher or a little bit lower. I want to build it up using multiple of those layers. So I'm going with a lower opacity and I just prefer to tweak it a little more later on. So let's go with something like this. Now, when I deactivate the layer, you can see it's a very, very, very subtle effect, but it looks so cool. Now, before applying another layer of this autumn glow effect, however, I do want to apply a little bit of burning since especially the mountains in the back look a little bit too bright for my taste. So what I want to do here is again, create a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay, go into the TK panel plugin again. And uh, since I want to target the dark areas, I need to make use of a darks mask. So let me go through them real quick. I think the darks free mask should work pretty good. So I'm activating the layer mask mode again, I click on free, and then I can start working on the burning part. For that, we want to grab the brush and set the foreground color to black. In this case, I might want to lower the opacity of the brush even further because burning is usually quite a bit stronger. And then I'm just going to brush over the mountains in the distance. Okay, that looks much, much, much better. However, I also want to apply some more dodging. So again, new layer, 
choose overlay blending mode. This time, I think I'm just going with the lights one mask. Set the foreground color of the brush back to white since we want to dodge things. And bring up the brush opacity. And now just paint in a little light. All right, that looks great. So with all of that set up, we can apply the second layer of the Autumn Glow effect. Again, I want to merge everything into a new single layer. So let's hit Shift, Control, Alt, E one more time. And again, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Again, I'm going with a radius of, of around 18 pixels. Hit OK, go to Edit and choose Fade Gaussian Blur. Switch the blending mode. Let's try color dodge for once and bring down the opacity. This is looking kind of weird, so I'm I much rather skip the mode again to lighten. And again, just play around with, with the opacity. So I think for this image, a stronger Orton Glow effect might actually not be that bad. So let's raise the opacity somewhere around here and hit OK. And I think that's it for the editing of this image. I hope this autumn glow effect is actually visible after the YouTube compression right now. However, it looks really, really good. So if you have any more questions left about this, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.